we have uh, the amazing, the incredible Julie Plett coming on here soon. So hopefully you guys are uh, enjoying this. I'm, I'm learning as we go, so I appreciate uh, everybody coming back. Fabia, <laughs> hello Phoenix Crystal. Let's see, Lorraine Ost, hello again. I'm glad you're enjoying. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. All right, all right, all right. Da, da, da. Hmm. Let's see. I think she knows. Now she knows to do this. See, Nick was funny. Nick is always funny. Nick is, um, he's just, he's just one of the funniest people I've met. And, uh, like, it is incredibly hard to, uh, oh, thank you, Mongren. Mongren 18, thank you, that's very kind. Um, he's, he's incredibly hard to, to work with because he's just a funny, actually. Um, he's, uh, it, it's incredibly hard to keep a straight face with that guy, but it's fun. Hey! I <laughs> figured it out. I know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I have never done this. That's so funny. I'm so um, technologically deficient when it comes to the Insta lives. Yeah, I'm, I'm the guy who just joined Instagram and then um, did, a, did a couple of Instagram lives with somebody else controlling everything. And then, and then they asked me to do this, which was probably a big mistake. Maybe. Who'd you talk to already? Hi, um, I, I talked to, um, I talked to, uh, there's, there's Nick. Nick just said hello. Oh, hey, Nick. Um, I was just talking to Nick Wexler and, uh, and, um, before that it was Karina oh, and good. then, and then Lily. Oh. There's Lily. <laughs> ah. <laughs> um, um, wait, I have to tell people I'm here so they come listen. Hold on a second. I'm going to tweet it. All right. Yeah, we've been um, having, we've been, I've been having a lot of fun doing this. Um, I'm supposed to be posting more pictures and, and posting, you know, more, more behind the scenes stuff, which I, which I probably will get to at some point, but, uh, but this has been, this has been a lot more fun to do. Yeah. <laughs> Is it CW Roswell NM? Is that it? Yeah. Is yeah. Okay. And <laughs> 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 the OG Max Evans. You don't have Twitter, do you, Jay? Yes, I don't. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't uh, dove on that surfboard just yet. Okay. I'm impressed. Your like Instagram game is Instagram game is pretty good for someone who waited 17 years to sign up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm. 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 I'm a quick study, but still, it's a lot of stuff to, to get on. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm. Um, I'm at home working and nice. uh, doing my, you know, virtual writer's room stuff and right. all that. So it's, it hasn't been, um, I've had plenty to do, plenty to keep me busy. So I, you yeah. know, kind of like just doing it from my bedroom as opposed to an office. Right. <laughs> Trying to keep everybody working, keep yeah. everybody employed. Yeah. I was talking to Karina about that just as far as like the, the, the new world that we live in going forward with how we, you know, how you go forward and, and try to make a TV show with certain limitations and rules that are, you know, obviously very important to have, but it's, it's, it's difficult. Yeah. It's like, on one hand, you want to be really clever so that it's not obvious that you're writing to cover for a bunch of production realities that you have to cover for. Right. Um, but you don't want to be like one of 80 shows that are writing like the quarantine episode, right, you know, right, <laughs> like right, you right. just like people are going to get so sick of that too. So it's really, it, you know, it's impossible to predict the future of what audiences are going to get excited about or feel like are sort of forced or, um, you know, like we're forcing an idea down their throats or if you're supposed to acknowledge this is a thing that happened or not acknowledge that it happened. It's, it's weird. Tell Nina Dobrev to join. I just actually texted Nina. I just found out that the bar that we spent all of our time at in Atlanta, all through Vampire Diaries, is closing. 
Oh no. I know. I'm devastated. So I just texted Nina, Paul, and Candace, and I was like, "This is a disaster." I know. It's um, even in my my neck of the woods here. Like, there's certain establishments that were able to keep themselves, you know, going and afloat, and other ones are just, you know, they probably won't be back at all. Yeah. yeah. Brutal. We shall emerge from this in a, in a very different way, but we will we will survive. Yeah. Um, once once we leave the house again, which might be never. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you know, one of these, one of the shows out there will, you know, go, you know what, we are doing the, the, the um, quarantine show and one of them will hit, but then a bunch of other ones will probably be like, I, we don't need any more of that. Yeah. Well, I mean, storytelling has always served multiple purposes. One is to give you an escape from the world that you live in and the feelings that you're feeling. And the other is to dial right into the world that you're living in and the feelings that you're feeling. And, um, and so it's going to be hard to sort of decide which world to lean into. Like I know Legacy is, is, is uniquely situated to do things that are fantastical, whereas Roswell is a very much a real world environment and very much about yeah. you know real politics and real social issues. So it's going to be, um, I don't envy the job of Karina and the writers yeah. trying to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, is, uh, now you guys are still in, in Georgia for, for Legacy, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And now, and now, I mean, are, the, there now, are, but yes. are the rules a little bit less strict over there right now? Or is there, because everyone shoots in different places. Well, we, I mean, I don't know that we'll be back shooting until the fall. Um, mm. Certainly, we're nowhere near being able to shoot right now. I mean, I wouldn't be excited about the rules being easier in Georgia. <laughs> if anything, it would make me want to stay home longer. Um, but, uh, you know, I guess we'll have, that'll be the first thing we have to figure out is, is whose rules do you follow and how to keep people safe and, and how to make sure it's as safe as it can be um, in spite of what certain governments might be doing to say that they're ready to be open for business. Right, right. So for people who don't know, you and I have known each other for one. So basically, nineteen ninety eight. Eight. What year was season two of Dawson's Creek? I think it was. Hold eight, on, let's look that up. I think it was ninety eight. So I, I, I do believe our relationship can go have a drink with us now. I think it's. <laughs> I think it's around that. <laughs> Dawson's <laughs> Creek season two. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. It was 1998. So yeah. we met in 99. We met no, because we met we in met November. Yeah. Because yeah. so that was my first show. Was was um, God, what's his name? Greg Berlanti. That yeah. guy. That guy. Some. I, Some I like know. you know. I don't know what he's doing. But uh, um, overhyped, overhyped yeah. hack. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so he. So it was. It was his first episode, I believe, of Dawson's Creek. It was the first episode of television that he had ever written. Oh, it was episode seven of Dawson's Creek season two. It was his first writer's job. It was the first time he got paid as a writer. And so he was there with you when you mm -hmm. shot it. And then I came to visit with Kevin Williamson that year and met you. We sat next to each other at a big cast dinner mm -hmm. and then we hung out in New York that year for Upfronts because yeah. I was working on a TV show called Wasteland that none Wasteland, of us ever yeah. saw. Um, Cause it was on for like, I'm not kidding you, six minutes. And then Jason was uh, on the original Roswell and they both got picked up at the first, um, the same time. And we mm -hmm. spent a lot of time hanging out in the streets of New York City with Eddie right. Mills and Michelle Williams. <laughs> Michelle, yeah. yeah, that was, that was amazing. That was such a special time. That was actually, that was my first time to New York City. Out of That's all my right. travels, out of all my travels, my, my parents, for those of you who might not know, I, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but my parents were, were like sort of like these, these hippies and they, they traveled around a bit. And we were often in a car somewhere, you know, in, in the United States. And it was usually anywhere west of the Mississippi is where we went. We never really went east. Oh my God. So that was my first time in New York. And I remember getting off of the plane, it was me and Shiri, and just lying down in the in the limousine that they'd sent for us and rolled the the moonroof back and just looked at all these skyscrapers just sort of like going by like these giant fingers towards the sky it was really Ugh. it was a real special time for me that's so cool that's so cool i yeah i mean that whole watching the original roswell have its moment was so exciting of course knowing yeah. you and 
being friends with you and like getting you just, you know, getting to see you go through that whole ride. And then now here we are all these years later and we sort of came full circle, which I think is, is, is so great. <laughs> it's so cool. It's so cool. And, I, and I was, I've yeah. been talking about that as well. It's, 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 it's very, it's very special for us. Like for, for me personally, it's, it's a very special full circle sort of serendipitous journey to be able to play in this world 20 years later in a very different way. And yet yeah. there's still, there's still a lot of it that feels very familiar and like a sort of like a homecoming for me. Like it was just, um, it's just been, it's really special. Well, you were telling me how, like, when you got to set, there were certain crew members that had worked on the original who were like, yeah. hey man, what's up? Like, no yeah, it was that. crazy. We it's, had, that's amazing. It never, that never happens. Yeah. The wardrobe supervisor, um, Andrea, and um, the, the, uh, the stunt coordinator was my stunt double. Um, it was just, it was just all these different moments of like, what? And I was talking about this earlier, like, one of the most challenging things for me was not walking into Nathan's trailer because, right. <laughs> because like, I was just like this, like, like Pavlovian's dog. I mean, I just went right towards anything that said Max. Yeah. Um, so funny. Nathan probably took, was like, Hey bro, what's up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, buddy. Um, <laughs> we, um, there was even one time, like uh, it was the end of the first episode I shot and, um, and uh, he was on, on set. Um, for one of the nights and we both ended up going converging on the same chair like it was I had to go ooh <laughs> that's, that's, that's awkward yeah. yeah 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 it just it was just so it was just so normal to me it just felt like a normal you know way of behaving like okay I see Max I go there one of the things that I think that this um, iteration of the show is so lucky to have is Santa Fe because yeah just the scope of the desert itself is so incredible and and the original didn't have that it had you know it had a little bit of a like big bear joshua tree kind of flavor yeah but yeah. like this you can make and we used to talk about it in early days when i was when i was helping at the very beginning and we would say all you need for a scene is a big stretch of road and a pickup truck and like you just find if you can find empty space outside the back door of your of your stages and just throw up an awesome car that like two people who are flirting can sit on the on the trunk of like right. you're golden you know right. and right. there's a freedom to that that's pretty great you know just knowing that there doesn't need to be a lot of bells and whistles in this show it can it can the bells and whistles can come in the sci-fi and it can come in the mystery but it doesn't have to come in you know in big expensive locations you can just point and shoot and capture just incredible beauty by the way i have to say because i'm trying to like read these little comments as they go although i'm terrible at walking and chewing gum at the same time but uh yeah. no there is no season nine um and it's funny because i don't know who started that rumor but that rumor got a lot of traction because i've had like non-twitter non-social media people asking me about it um which is a bummer of course you know We'd, we'd probably certainly I'll be game for it in some way, but no, there's no season nine of Vampire Diaries in the works um, as much as I certainly would love to watch mm. it. Probably more than write it at this point, but watch it, yes. And Legacies is in, in what season? It's uh... Legacies is three. I know, I know. Everyone's crying now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, all those, all those <laughs> rainbow of, hearts just turned black. The killer of dreams. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. Uh, no, Legacies is going to be in season three, with the same as Roswell. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So as soon as we can get back to work, well, that's, you know, we're excited to do that. Yeah. It sort of sucks to know that there's a lot of people, like, ready to ready to get started. And, and yeah. just knowing that we're kind of going to sit on our hands for a bit. In the process of actually breaking down the season, like, do you have... I mean, are you in the very beginning stages of like thoughts about what things might be? Or are you guys kind of making a choice and going forward? Or? Um, we had not started our writer's room yet for season three because okay. we were still shooting season two. So we hadn't even gotten to our last episode. We had just handed in our last episode of the season for season two. And usually once you finish the last episode, you then spend a bunch of time talking about um, what, season, what your next season is going to look like. But mm -hmm. we finished our last episode script and then they're like, you're done, go you're home. Done. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're, we're going to be, once we do get the go ahead to work, we are going to be starting, which is kind of fun because we'll have had like this really 
I mean, the break certainly wasn't fun, but the idea of like being able to go in and talk into a new season about with your head clear of right. the old season, you don't get that very often. And so right. it should be interesting. I know yeah. like the Roswell room's been going for like, God, since early April. So they're getting stuff done. I mean, it's just, it's just a crazy, it's a crazy way to sort of create and go forward. I mean, so we were, I had to do my ADR for 213 all from home. Which yeah, was, which by the way, I heard, I, I'm on this writer's board with um, a, a writer who works in animation and he was telling me that they were doing like quality control, airability tests on ADR filmed in different, uh, recorded in different locations. And there was someone who recorded ADR in his closet and another person who did it in his bathroom. And it was like a 97% airability percentage, meaning like it's good enough for air, even though it was recorded uh, on their iPhone. Wow. So, so yeah. It was crazy. For me, it was, it was weird because I actually, I ended up not doing it on my iPhone. I did it on my computer because um, I have an external mic here. And I did that, but I couldn't, matching the playback was really challenging to like figure out how to like, because there are no beeps. And then, yeah. and then I, have, I have a six-year-old who wants to break down the door like the Kool-Aid man, you know, every 10 minutes. Yeah. So it yeah, was, it was uh, but we got it done, but we got it done. Um, and I, I guess the sound quality was good, but it was, it was, it was just a totally foreign thing for me. Well, that's, I mean, if this had all happened even two years ago, you wouldn't have been able to continue with post-production. I mean, we did, uh, Roswell Legacies, everything did all of its uh, post-production remotely. And so right. usually you've got like 15 people sitting on a soundstage dealing with dialogue and music and sound effects and, and ADR and all that stuff. And everybody was doing their job from home. And thank God the equipment is high-end enough that you can get that equipment in your home and then bundle it all together um, yeah. at the end. But it's pretty wild a hosey rain kiss that's so funny it's like a meeting of worlds here it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> you guys i would love joseph to be on legacies you'd have to convince him of that that is a that would be a dream get get him to come to danielle in some sort of like obi-wan kenobi afterlife mentor moment um, so you guys can work on that. You 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 harass him on Twitter because I won't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Karina's there. Karina's here. Hey, hey, Karina. Um, Karina, by the way, um, thank you for that nice thing that you posted the other day. That was very sweet. Somebody asked her who taught her, or how she learned how to be a writer, and she said I taught her, which is not mm. true completely. But I did give her a certain set of lessons to live by, which she proceeded to ignore and do well in spite of me anyway. So it's all good. It worked out fine. I feel like between like you and, and Berlanti and Karina, you guys are going to be, you know, in taking over this world as it, as it is now. Like the three of you guys are just like. It's incredible. I mean, everybody, I mean, Greg, obviously Berlanti is the, the, the greatest success story of all, but everybody that, worked on the originals, which is Karina's first TV job, mm -hmm. is doing so well. We just were Zooming with some of them the other night and just listening to what they're up to and it's watching everybody break into their own careers and, and develop their own shows and show run their own shows is such a thrill. Mm -hmm. It's a thrill to see everybody kind of, you know, kill it in their own way. Yeah. Nothing will be harder for anybody than the first couple seasons of Vampire Diaries. And so I feel like once they've gone off and created their own shows, they, it's like practically vacation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you have to do while you're here? Who else are you talking to? Um, let's see. I am going to be talking to, um, it's so funny. I, I'm supposed to be like, you know, like posting these pictures and stuff like that, but I'm like, and I, and I will, but, I, but, but like I've been able to get, you know, my friends to come talk to me. So, which is, no, a which is awesome. Fun. A lot more fun to do. <laughs> I, um, I just said somebody, by the way, I just said somebody typed David Nutter is a legend, which is true. Mm -hmm. And I will use this as a shameless plug because David, David Nutter directed the pilot for containment. For containment, yeah, with you. <laughs> which is my short-lived, beloved, beloved show about life in a quarantine. quarantine. So if anybody hasn't seen it, it's uh, Go check on Netflix. It out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, that was, I mean, like, when you and I went on that walk that day, it was like, it's like, how, how amazing that you were able to put that together. And people who are watching that now, or even, um, what is it, Soderbergh's movie? Um, 
contagion. So, contagion, yeah. yeah. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. having, yeah, it's just, yeah, great minds. Great minds, Julie Clark. <laughs> well, I um, can thank the, uh, the, uh, the Belgians, I suppose, because I believe it was a Belgian format. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So they, they made up the story, and I just... I made just, it better. Uh, well, I, no, I made it different, to put it that way. <laughs> I made it American. Um, um, all right, so sorry, I interrupted you. You said you're, you're talking to still... I, I have Janine at 445. Perfect. Um, Shiri Appleby, um, around 515 or 530, I believe. And then I'm gonna bring it home with Aisha, who directed the the um, the episode. Tonight. Oh, fantastic! And then, then we'll we'll, uh, we'll hop off. Shiri um, has saved my life this this quarantine because uh, her husband is a chef, as you know, Jay, John but Ennis, yeah. knows. and um, and so somehow I made it onto her like group email list. Thank God, mm -hmm. because she mm -hmm. sends me like once a week like the stock of groceries right, that you can right. buy at John and Vinny's. And I'm like, it's been like my resource for fresh vegetables and meat because you just can't get it at the grocery store to save your life around here. No, and, so, the, and like the thing about those emails are, it's like you, you have a chance to go in there and like get the stuff because yeah. it goes fast. It goes fast. Yeah. They, and yeah, John and Vinny's, I'm, 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 I'm glad they're doing what they're doing to keep, you know, to keep going. And also that the, they've been so helpful, you know. Yeah. Um, I think there's other there's a couple other places doing that like um, uh, Mercado is doing it with Monsieur Marcel at the farmers market. Right, They're doing like a market and food bundles and food kits and stuff, which is great. Mm -hmm. That's nice. You gotta look, you know find it where you can get it. Yeah, and support support the stuff you love. And eat a vegetable. Eat a vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, God. What, right, what else do we have some, uh, While we're sitting here, let's look at some questions. Let's, let's see. do it. Why did I? Oh, gosh. Okay. I'm not going to. <laughs> Legacies. Julie. How are you, though? How I'm are good. you, though? Thank you for asking. That was a very, uh -huh. sweet, very sweet question. Um, these go by fast. How do people ever, like... They go by <laughs> seriously fast. And I'm the kind of person when I'm in a conversation that I, I want to have the conversation. I kind of, like, really pay, paying attention to it. But... Yeah. You know, if if uh, if you're trying to be interactive and and, and check things out, Twin Saber, Fave Ship. Hi, is she? Uh oh, things are about to get mean. I'm gonna have to. Damon Elena's kids. Okay, so Damon Elena thus far only have kids in the canon in the alt U. Um, that doesn't mean they don't have kids in the real timeline. You just will have to wait and see. I do still talk to Ian and Paul. Paul has puppies. I don't know if anybody sees his Instagram, but he's been fostering like multiple puppies, which is very, very, very kind of him. Um, when bring legacies to UK, I would love to, you got to take that up with Warner Brothers. I don't know what they're doing there. Um, they haven't sold it to anybody in the UK yet. And so it can't air there as far as I know. Um, Paul's funnier than Ian for sure. Um, going to create a show for Jason. Sure. Why not? One day. Absolutely. Um, talk about TVD. I'm like so actually lucky. genuinely sad about this bar closing. I know that seems really silly to mourn uh, the loss of a bar, but um, pretty much from season one, our DP found this little bar called the Krog Bar in Inman Park and started hanging out there. It was like a little wine bar. It was basically the size of your, you know, two car garage with a little patio in front of it. And for eight seasons, that was where when we would wrap we would go and they would keep it open for us late sometimes and we'd sit there and you know hot Atlanta summer nights and we'd have the best time and it was always the whole crew and the cast and we had our rap parties there and we had our you know series rap after party there and our hundredth after party there and and it's gone it's, it's not gone yet it's gonna be gone and that's like when they when I found out that they sold the Salvatore house the original Salvatore house um, and somebody tore it down and before we had a chance to go take a camera out there and film it more. And it's like a Mercedes Benz corporate office now. And it was this beautiful historical home. So those are my, my TVD nostalgia is on high alert today. Plus yeah. it's Marguerite McIntyre's birthday. Uh, and she played Shara Forbes and um, anything Shara Forbes is, uh, is always something that will make me happy. So go, you can head to Instagram and wish her a happy birthday too. Save ship. I don't, I don't, I don't ship. I write ships. <laughs> I write ships. My, my goal as a writer is to make you ship. So I can't have my own ship because then I wouldn't make you ship other things. 
Um, yeah, they tore in the house. It's awful. I know. Um, Tabasco sauce in Roswell. Uh, no, they won't be doing that because uh, that was a that was a strictly a Roswell thing. They've changed it over to um, uh, nail polish for Roswell, New Mexico. So the the, the uh, Tabasco sauce. Well, if you maybe somewhere down the line there might be a little Easter egg somewhere if you're paying attention, but uh, we'll see. Oh really? Would maybe. you sneak one on? <laughs> um, <laughs> that was your one contribution you get there and you just like, like right. the little where's Waldo just the one thing just, just <laughs> oh, happy birthday Simran please back, bring back oh sorry it's already oh it's already gone can't read it huh? <laughs> uh, so who what was it I can go back with mine no no it's okay it's okay. good it was asking a question I didn't want to answer okay <laughs> Swipe up. Swipe up. You guys, Comic Con has been has been canceled. I don't know if you heard this this year, which is devastating. But yes. I've been hearing hearing through the grapevine um, and the news and Google that they're looking to do like Couch Comic Con, where they they oh, use panels and that kind of thing on digital and broadcast it out, which I think would be great. Um, Comic Con is my favorite thing to do every year, and I'm devastated to not go. Um, but it's uh, definitely being able to give the access to all those panels to everybody on social media is kind of incredible. So we'll see if they actually do something like that. Hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's uh, Comic-Con has become such this, this ginormous thing when in the beginning it was different and has evolved and having that gone is such a, a huge hole. Is your kid oh, into, um, is Atticus into sci-fi or anything like that? Like <laughs> comics? I know he loves, I know he loves cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, you know, right now it's like he started to get into more, um, he started watching like live action stuff. And then I think he watched, he watched the Goonies and then he got really kind of like, he, he liked, you know, certain elements of it, but he also kind of got a little afraid from having nightmares. And so we back we backed off of that kind of stuff, because um, he had seen like the he had seen Star Wars um, uh, four, five, and six, um, like the the OG ones, but but um, and he actually did go into the uh, to the movie theater to go see the very last Star Wars, um, and he was just more excited to be there with his older cousins than he was to actually seeing. Right. He, 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 he was watching. I mean, like, he's not trial. online yelling at uh, Ryan Johnson and JJ or whoever. Right. Right. Yeah. He's not yeah. trolling. Um, <laughs> not yet um but uh but uh he he just likes cartoons more than anything and I, someone else was asking me earlier like does atticus watch roswell and he doesn't he doesn't really know what yeah to do. He, he wouldn't know except he to wouldn't. see your face which would be kind of cute yeah. yeah um is the car daemon no the car daemon drove is being used for legacies uh that's what lizzie saltzman and josie saltzman drive um sorry jason i just was i got distracted by questions again that's did I intend problem. to break your heart by killing Klaus? I did not intend to break anyone's heart, certainly, though. I did intend to make people feel very sad. Uh, Landon doesn't have a middle name yet. I don't think so. Not that we've given him. Um, Hosey, look, from your mouth to, like, my alternate mm -hmm. universe ears, I love I love them as a, as a team. Um, I saw somebody ask if, if, uh, if Tess was going to be coming by. I don't... <laughs> think that's possible i think tests like the tabasco are yeah things that are... <laughs> just sneak in the background somewhere <laughs> like a, a glance from behind the bar <laughs> oh my god um there is not a season nine of tvd i said that but i'll say it again just because i know it like to a disney movie for atticus that's a good idea dude yeah i mean people if that's someone's asking about that like i <clears throat> like even like you know doing like a, a, a you know voices for cartoons i thought about like well at least you'd be able to hear my voice and something like that so I, I thought about it like if that if that presented itself um yeah doing a disney i i actually you know what i i did i auditioned for one disney movie back in the day called brother bear oh cute and i thought i thought well for sure i'm getting hired i mean come on it's like <laughs> it's just like it's a no-brainer and then and then joaquin phoenix got it and i was like oh, oh, oh. all right well Good company, I guess. Not, not, yeah, not bad. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's he's all he's all about Disney all day, every day. What um what have people been most curious to know about when you've been talking to people today? What's been like the big Roswell? A lot of people want to know. know. Wa the lot of people want to know um, 
you know, if other people are going to join um, the, you know, Roswell New Mexico. A lot of people have been asking about what, what would my favorite thing about, um, you know, about the old show is and about the new show and um, uh, how it felt to play this character. Um, I'm trying to think about what else it was. Again, it was really hard to kind of like the questions. Did Karina give you any scoop? Did Karina give spoilers? Like, did she give you any exclusives? So she, so she, there's something that happens tonight that was a little bit spoilerish that that Karina started to kind of give up. But I honestly don't know if anybody heard her. I heard somebody say, I know a lot of people are asking for Brendan Fair. Um, a lot of people are asking for Brendan Fair, Nick Wexler. Um, there he is. A pair of my jeans on Roswell were Joaquin's from Clay Pigeons. For reals. What? I, I, I don't, I don't not believe that. That's. that's I, I don't not believe that either. I think that's <laughs> but, but Nick totally Wexler, possible. I know. Um, <coughs> but, uh, but, um, what was I just saying? Oh, so, so something that- Wait, was that Nick who just said that? Yeah, Nick, Nick oh. Wexler said that. So Nick and I are both involved with um, the Austin TV Festival. So we should give it a little plug here because much like Comic-Con, they usually uh, meet to have a great convention every June in Austin where they celebrate all thing like nerd television. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this year they have to do it from the couch and so we're all putting together little like filmed video interstitials i have not done mine yet i'm behind they want me to like walk around my house and say what my favorite like cocktail is and i make it home in the quarantine so i'm i'm, I'm trying to avoid just like <laughs> pointing at like six bottles of wine and a wine opener <laughs> yeah yeah i've got to i've got to get a little more creative than that so um but we're kind of try to do um little panels virtual panels so that people can buy access to the festival and see this if you guys don't know about austin tv festival you have missed out because it is the greatest event of the year because they don't care what's cool now like it's not about like oh so and so needs to be there to promote their new show right. they go after like writers and actors and panels for shows that people used to love like back mm -hmm. in the day like you did a you did a Roswell reunion. We did a Roswell with, one, yeah. Like, we did, we did Roswell there. with 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 Friday Night Lights. They were there at the exact yeah. same time. Yeah, yeah. And so it's just like I mean, I did a panel last year about writing grief in television, and we were talking about Fleabag, and we were talking about mm -hmm. Dead to Me, and we were talking about um, uh, that great Al Fanning show on Facebook. And they talk about all this random stuff. Karina does panels and representation. We do panels where we just talk about like the process of writing. We do all kinds of things. And you, it's so easy to get there, like to buy tickets, to answer, ask and answer questions. It's just so user friendly. Like there's no, nobody's like putting, everybody just flies themselves there and like, you know, puts themselves up. Nobody's like, you know, demanding hair and makeup and getting driven around. In fact, it doesn't matter if you have hair and makeup because it's so flipping hot that you're it's just so hot, yeah. all the time anyway. Um, <laughs> So it's like a bunch of people who just love to talk about television. Yeah, around and talking about television. Anyway, that's my, that's my that's plug. <laughs> Paul, and Nina, and Wesley. As you Paul and Wesley did. Paul, Wesley, and Nina. Yeah, they had real chemistry. They, they kind of didn't like each other for a while. So that was great chemistry. <laughs> like, that, always, that always shows up as, you know, as good chemistry. And then they loved each other. And that was good, too. Um, there is TV on Netflix in certain places in Europe. It's just not, it's sold to different countries. Um, so not every country has it on Netflix. Um, it's not, Netflix doesn't own the whole thing. So you gotta kind of look around. It, it, it airs on, it airs in all the different countries. It's just not necessarily on Netflix. High five, Julie. You just got a high five from Nick Wexler for that. Ah, Nick, you are like the nicest person in the world. I wish I could see your face. Um, because it seems weird to be talking to nothing, but right, yeah, but yeah, you'll have to go back and watch you the movie. That he was hilarious. <laughs> um, um, but to go back real quick about uh, tonight's episode, when you're talking about Karina, she she started to talk about something that is happening in tonight's episode that was a little spoilerish, and then something happened with the sound where I couldn't hear her at all. I just thought oh, no. you know she was just sort of like talking in the silence, and apparently some of the people said they could hear her. So maybe they got the information. I have to go back and, and rewatch. But it was like it was that thing of like, oh, are we gonna are we gonna spoil this right now? Or are we gonna we'll just wait? But we'll see. I don't. We'll, so, I mean, the cat might be out of the bag right now. But um, I love it. Well, somebody yeah. somebody will be thrilled that they know. Yes, yeah. Matt Donovan. Matt Donovan is still alive. Matt Donovan will never die as long as I am remotely involved in these shows. 
he will may never show up on screen, but he will never die, which is a running joke between me and Brett Matthews, who has been trying to kill Matt Donovan for eight years. And um, and so, yes, <laughs> Brett, Brett, this could be the year because I've got other things I got to do. So this could be the year <laughs> that Brett finally wins. <laughs> you, got a, you got a few plates on your, a few uh, things on your plates, my friend. Exactly, exactly. Maddie Blue, I know my favorite. Um, all right, I, I was going to ask you more questions, but then I realized I don't know what to ask you. Um, ask me whatever you want. Other than when are we having sushi? <laughs> because, oh my God. Oh my God. Um, yeah, I need, to, I need to come back and get my plate. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have it actually. I did. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I'm, i miss that i miss that time you know um yeah, i'm gonna ask you so i'm gonna ask you some stuff too because i because i uh and this is i'm sure you've been asked so many questions i did the same thing to, to karina because a lot of people ask you questions and you and you have the the platform to answer them this is totally different this is um just fun stuff like um the old the, i'm sure you watched the actor studio with james lipton in back in the day yes yeah and the and the and the uh, Bernard Pivot um, questions? No. All right, here we go. All right, hit me. All right, what is your favorite word? Benevolent. Ooh. It's the first word that popped into my head. I don't know if it's my favorite. <laughs> you, you can have time to think if you want, but yeah. if I, like, I like the fast answer. Um, what is your least favorite word? Moist. Atlanta, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, what, turn, what, what turns you on? Oh gosh, longing. Mm. And what turns you off? Narcissists. There you go. This I love this one. What is the what is the sound or noise that you love? The ocean, mm. or no, even just a lake, like the the gentle lapping of water. Mm -hmm. um, and what is the sound or noise you like least? <sighs> So I have this thing called misophonia, which is an actual thing, thank God, um, because it is very strange. But I hate certain sounds like they pierce my soul and destroy me from the inside out. One of which and the biggest of which is gum chewing. I hate the sound of other people chewing their gum in ways that I can't begin to explain <laughs> or rationalize but i have made a rule in my writers rooms i have not many rules because i'm generally a nice person but like i can be real cranky when it comes to certain things and one of them is no chewing gum in the writers room period end of story unless you're so good at chewing gum in the writers room that i can't tell you're chewing chewing gum which was carolyn drees who apparently had gum in her mouth for eight years and i never realized it as i was complaining <laughs> about gum chewing and the other is phones buzzing on table surfaces in mm. a, in the writer's room. So like if I'm like minding my own business trying to, you know, think of a good story and then someone's phone is like bzz, bzz, um, I get really, really, really cranky about that. So those are my two, I mean, phone buzzing in normal life don't plague me, but the, in, a, in a contained room where I'm supposed to be like in control of the Focusing, sound environment, yeah. it yeah. drives me nuts. Um, all right. And fingernails um, on the chalkboard, which just saying out loud, it just said chill yeah, down my spine. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Which, you know, did you always have this thing about the gum chewing? Ah. Because I, I used to chew gum. <laughs> I'm trying to make you take your mind off of it to, to a less sickening place. But, but the gum chewing, I used to chew a lot of gum back in the day. So I'm, I, 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 I'm, I apologize. No, it became a thing. Okay. It became okay. a thing because I was in, a, in an environment with two people who were chewing gum so loudly and I couldn't tell them not to because I, I, I knew it was rude to tell them not to. And so I was sitting on my hands um, trying to not tell them to not chew gum. And I had like sort of a mini control freak panic attack from the inside out because I was so frustrated that I couldn't politely, I didn't know how to politely ask without sounding like an asshole. So I just sat there stewing and suffering and resenting and going more and more crazy. and till I basically like recognized that I was having some sort of weird anxiety attack, internal anxiety attack. And I just like got up and left the room. And it was after that, it was like the trigger. And after that, anytime I heard somebody, I could hear somebody chew gum, I just lost my, I just, it's a weird, I actually had a, a therapist tell me once that it's like uh, an OCD trigger. 
Mm -hmm. And I'd never, like, there's not much about me that I would ever consider as OCD, except for certain tiny things like that. It's like sensory, it can be oral, it can be audio, uh, audio it can be um, uh, taste, certain tastes that yeah. can trick you, that kind of thing. You there was, help. Thank you. Thank you for your support. I hope you just read that. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was one um actor on on the on the OG se series that uh whenever they heard the sound of sand crunching underfoot on metal it was very specific mm. that it just drove them nuts it was just like it was and they could not it, it it was like nails on chalkboard yeah that's rough um all right, all right uh, next. this is fun i like these okay if heaven exists Okay. What would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Heaven has no Twitter. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> this is why I haven't joined Twitter. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, and, then, and then the last one I'm just going to ask you, this is my, what, what is the, did I ask you what the first thing you're going to do after quarantine? No. Okay, what is, what is the very first thing you're going to do when, when this is all over? Well, I don't expect it to ever be over, over, so I don't have like a benchmark. Um, but the thing that I look forward to doing the most, other than the obvious, like get the hair cut and the face and all that business, um, is I want to go and have dinner, probably sushi. Mm -hmm with a few of the friends I haven't been able to see this whole time and just eat and talk and catch up and be close and hug and all those things. Like the small act of like having a dinner across the table from someone that isn't the same person you're in the house with all day, every day right. for months at a time um, right. of ordering a bottle of wine and then ordering another bottle of wine or deciding to have dessert or not have dessert. and chatting with the waitress or flirting with the bartender and all those things like that's just the act of being in a restaurant is probably the thing I've missed the most. Yeah. Other just than like a, people. <laughs> it's a it's a basic human need to have social interaction. It's it's just something that we need. Yeah. So I'm I'm very much looking forward to that. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing your face and giving you a big hug. I know I know you're invited to my first sushi dinner. That's for sure. Uh, I'll be there. Yeah, you, you, you made there. the cut. <laughs> oh, I, I might actually cut the fish. I'll do that if you want. Oh, good. <laughs> um, all right, like while we're still here, before I sign off, let's give, let's see, Landon, Lizzie, Hope, oh gosh, totally agree, Julie. Thank you. Delena should have been endgame. Stefan shouldn't have died. Well, hmm. um, happy birthday, Simran, again. Joseph Morgan, come back. Up to you. You guys make it happen. I will support it. Stephanie Salvatore auditions. There's no such character yet. I'm not saying never, but yet. Brendan Fair, is he here? Is he not here? If he is, hi, Brendan. I don't know if I saw him. Um, cast me as Stephanie. No real Stephanie yet. Maybe one day. Ben Perdice, oh, thank you. I feel the same way. Danielle has a boyfriend. Oh, God, you have to ask her that. Thank you for bringing Joseph Morgan. You're welcome. He is a gift. I too am looking forward to the return of legacies. I do hear a lot of the same things a lot, but that's part of the job. Thank you for worrying about me. I appreciate it. Um, Taylor Swift should appear in legacies. You know what? Was it Karina telling the story? I can't remember who's telling the story, but like somebody wanted Taylor Swift to do a cameo in Vampire Diaries in the first season, I think. And we were like, no. And now I'm like, God, dumb. So dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Oh. All, right, All right, well, I'm going to get back to work. Yeah. This has been awesome. Thank Call you so much Atlanta. for coming on. I miss you, Atlanta. Georgia, I don't miss you. Georgia, I'm a little upset with you. But Atlanta, I miss you terribly. And you are perfect. And I look forward to getting back there. All right. All right. I love you, my friend. Love you, too. Talk All to right. you later. I don't know how to sign out, though. I, 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 think, I, I think I'm getting used to this. I can do this. Oh, All just right. hit X? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Bye-bye. All right, let's see what we can do. I'm going to save this. I'm going to go have a little bite to eat, I think, and then I'll be right back with some more pictures. And then I will have Miss Janine Mason on here in uh, maybe like a half an hour. All right, I'll be back soon.